What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ. Welcome back to the channel. This is our Thursday video, which means we got Dr. Jesse Morris of the Fancy Doctors in the headquarters to talk about all of the relevant injuries for 2019 fantasy football, specifically week eight. Welcome back to the channel, Doc. What's going on over there, man? Some very big name guys that will have a lot of impact. Uh, we'll, you know, Patrick Mahomes, obviously one of them. A couple of top wide receivers still banged up. A couple of top running backs that are obviously banged up and affected a lot of people. I'm sure people are pissed about David Johnson. So, uh, still busy. Injuries still matter. Always, baby. And we're going to get into a lot of those big name guys that he was talking about. We're going to start off with the quarterback position and work our way down. Obviously, the biggest injury of week seven came to Mr. Patrick Mahomes. Um, arguably, you know, one of the most valuable players that you can have on your team in fantasy football, at least last year. This year, he's been uh, a little bit disappointing relative to what we expected from him, but nonetheless, still a top tier elite player at the position. He comes into the game with this ankle sprain or high ankle sprain, which wasn't really much of a factor in terms of what he was doing fantasy wise. Maybe it was a little bit, but that's not the concern here. What happens is he dislocates his kneecap in this one, and we're hearing, we heard. A lot of very serious reports that at the very earliest, it would be probably a three-week timetable for him to get back on the field. And if he did get back on the field in three weeks, he would be limited by it. So it was more of like a three, four, maybe even five-ish week return timetable. He's already back at practice. We are filming this on Wednesday. You will be seeing this on Thursday. So if you enjoy this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. But Patrick Mahomes, back at practice. What that actually means, we don't know. That could just literally mean he was on the field and he's rehabbing part of like a normal process for this rehab. I would imagine there's absolutely no way he's playing this week and probably not even next week, but it's a little bit surprising just to see him back on the field, right? You're shaking your head. I know you got some thoughts about this. I saw a video of it. I was very surprised that he was on the field. What, what was the video of? I didn't see him it. in practice doing like moving around, uh, doing like short handoffs, not okay. super aggressive, but it's uh, if you check my timeline, it's on there. I just, I retweeted it. Right. Um, yeah, it's 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 like legit today. Him, it's there. I'm assuming it was today. It was the beat reporter saying it was today. Right. Here's here's my thoughts. He probably didn't have enough strength or velocity in his push as he was trying to get into the end zone to avoid getting close to people that would have been able to hit him. It is what it is. He got hit with a what looked like a lineman's knee or somebody's knee. Hit him at a, just a perfect bad angle. Pop that kneecap out. So as you know. When you have your leg fully extended, you can move your kneecap. That's normal. But when you're standing or when your knee is, is flexed 100% at a 90-degree angle, you shouldn't be able to move the kneecap. The kneecap is engaged. There is a ligament underneath that kneecap that prevents it from popping out. It's called the MPFL. The problem is you can tear it like anything. It doesn't do the best with healing which is why the question is, why doesn't he have surgery? Matt Stafford had this a couple of years ago. He missed four weeks, ended up having off-season surgery that year. Relatively common injury, but the good news is that Mahomes had a best-case scenario. He did not have any cartilage damage underneath the kneecap, which is usually if you're going to have cartilage damage with this type of injury, that's traditionally where you're going to get it because that's the thickest cartilage in the body. Let and me you, ask you, you just happen to catch the kneecap in the right plane when it pops out and you can either get a fracture or you can get a piece of important cartilage underneath the kneecap, get get kind of sloughed off with it as the kneecap pops out of the groove. Okay. Um, so you're saying a dislocated knee, the real recovery from it is the fact that there's a ligament underneath the knee that tears. Correct. Gotcha. So, uh, and, and I want people to make sure they understand the distinction. This is a kneecap and not a knee. Teddy Bridgewater several years ago had a dislocated knee. Those are usually life-threatening or limb-threatening. Yeah. I will say limb-threatening, not life-threatening, and co definitely career-threatening. Mackenzie Milton of UCF had this last year. True knee dislocations are a big deal. Right. Kneecap dislocations are annoying, but they're not as a big of a deal. The problem is whenever he starts to run or – do any abnormal movements, which is like the definition of football, that kneecap is going to want to pop out. It doesn't have anything keeping it in place. That ligament has to tear if it popped out. It just doesn't have a choice. It may have had a partial tear. That's possible. He's going to wear a brace. We, he had pants on, so we couldn't see it, but he was definitely wearing a brace. The good news is he was able to walk off on his own. 
power, which means it, there wasn't anything obstructing. You know, he was probably trying to tough it out, but uh, he obviously didn't have a ton of swelling uh, if he's already back less than a week, basically less than a week later. But the kind of like Tyreek, the question remains, when is the risk reward time for him to return? The data shows in the algorithm, I put that on my feed too, because there's a good article about it, three to six weeks. That's what the data shows. Like everybody's been saying, that's where they get it. Three to six weeks. He will eventually probably need surgery to stabilize and rebuild that that ligament. Problem is, it's not the best surgery, so that may be why they're trying to avoid it, and it would be season ending right now. What's the recovery like from that surgery? Say he has it in the off season, he'll be fine in a couple months. I mean, uh, it takes some time to get back to normal, but he'll be all right. Not nothing overly concerning in the future. Here, here's the caveat though: if he returns, say it's, I, I highly doubt it's this week or next week or even maybe maybe two weeks. Uh, their bye week, I think, is in three weeks. Then, if he is trying to avoid a would be sacker and he shuffles out of the way and kneecap pops out again and he tears significant ligament damage underneath the kneecap, that is potentially permanently detrimental to his knee. That's the problem here. Okay. It's not about what's happening now. It's about the fact that you can't ultimately prevent it from re-popping back out. The data shows 9 to 44% of these pop back out. Obviously, he's at even it's higher risk. Why, why, is it, why is it 9 to 44? Like it's really Be, random. Predominantly because of how many different age and, and how many different risk factors there are. Okay. Uh, if you have a full tear, you have other ligament tear. You, um, some people have what we call a, a high patella. It rides high or, or a low patella. So there's a lot of variation as a result of that. His sport, football, as by its nature, is going to be a high range. So he may even be higher than that technically. Okay. That's That will be our longest discussion today. But that's what I wanted to tell people. I was really surprised when I saw that pop my phone. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. I'm like, just be really reasonable here. Come on. So you're yeah. So you're worried about them pushing him back a little bit too early. Possibly, they seem like they know what they're doing. So uh, I mean, and he's going to want to get out there. This is this this is their nature. At at best, I'd say get him back in two weeks. At best, and and, and even then, God, you got to be. I mean, you saw how relatively ineffective he was with his high ankle. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't very good. I mean, he was better than 90% of quarterbacks, but he wasn't Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I mean, that's what makes him so deadly is like his arm is great and he's got a strong arm, but realistically, you know, 90% of the NFL quarterbacks have strong arms. It's just the fact that he's so good at escaping the pocket Mm -hmm. and accurately using that strong arm down the field. That's what makes him so deadly because a lot of these people in a vacuum can do the things that he does, whether it's roll out or scramble or have a strong arm, but putting it all together is what makes it a crazy package. So if not, he's a sitting duck. Exactly. And we don't want that from Patrick Mahomes because that doesn't let his wide receivers develop downfield. Mm -hmm. And I I agree with you. I think the chiefs do a good job with this. Um, Even seeing with Tyree kill, you you probably thought it was a little bit early on the timetable for Tyree kill to return, but we saw back. We saw as soon as he got back, he was still not playing a full slate of snaps. He played less than 50% of the snaps. He's still easing his way into the lineup. So like there's, still being cautious with him. So you would expect the same thing with their star quarterback going forward. God, I mean, you hope so. I mean, I understand they want to limit their times missed with him. They're definitely a playoff team. I think Matt Moore isn't awful. He's not terrible. He'll be but, fine. I mean, this is kind of a big game for them. They have Sunday night versus the Packers. So I understand why it's a big game, but I just think this is way too soon to return. I mean, yeah, it's been just fun too to watch risky. Watch. It's just too risky in my opinion. It's too risky. Yeah. Would have been fun to see both a, a healthy Mahomes and Rodgers battle. Oh, right now, but, I know. All right, let's uh, let's keep moving. Uh, that will probably be the longest. Uh, What's up? Josh Gordon just went to IR. Done for the season. Ah, uh, I figured he was on the list, and I was about to. I was gonna pull. Uh, him up a bit. That's why Sanu. Yeah, I was gonna say they signed Sanu. That seems like there's something up with Josh Gordon. Uh, <laughs> is that what is, is that uh, expression from? Is that just speaking as a Patriots fan? That no, a- that's from 8 million best ball teams now just um, lost the main wide receiver. <laughs> I, own, I own like zero shares of Josh Gordon in best ball. Oh, like, I got him as like a 10th round pick. He was a steal. Oh, yeah. He later was. than that. Yeah. Uh, at the time, I was just like, I doubt he's even going to come back or play at all this season. But I guess it turned out, you know, as fantasy football always does, like some things work out. But so, a lot of the yeah. times, like the way they work out is never how you plan them to work he, out. He but, didn't do very well. I was going to say, even when he was, he was disappointing. Home, 
Yeah. So uh, just unfortunate. I, my suspicion is he has a pretty big tear in his uh, MCL. He's got either either a severe high ankle or even maybe a meniscal tear. And they just said there's too many things going on. We don't have the spot. We need Harry back. And they got Sanu, so they're, that's how they compensated. But it's unfortunate. It's just actually disappointing. Makes, that makes Nikhil Harry a little bit interesting now because had he come back to Sanu, Edelman, Gordon, Dorsett, like yeah. he, where does he fit in? But now he can really kind of capture that alpha outside role. Um, but let's, let's, let's finish with the quarterbacks that we have. We have yep. Matt Ryan is dealing with a sprained uh, ankle. They play the Seahawks this weekend. They have a bye mm-hmm. week after that. But – he is back at practice in a limited fashion, I believe, and they're saying that he's probably going to suit up. I mean, it's an ankle injury. He's not Mahomes. He does not scramble out of the pocket much, but in the same sense, like you still need to be mobile in the pocket in order to be successful as an NFL quarterback. So in my eyes, like it's the Falcons have been terrible. It's like, what are they playing for? They have a buy next week, so why not smarten up, let him sit one more? Yeah. But if it's just a sprained ankle and it's not that serious, you know, these are NFL players. So, like, you know, is it just like a mass situation? If you could. So, based on the video, it looks like a high ankle sprain. Okay. Um, which would be a little bit more cause for concern. I'm not super surprised that he would play it this week because as long as he can make it through this game, he has another week off and then he should be pretty good. Worst case scenario would be re injure and then miss the rest of the season or something like that. That would be obviously awful. Mm-hmm. They, they really don't have much hope to be honest with you that this, this team is, is already done. Yeah. Hence the it's a new trading. Uh, just to correct something I said, he did not practice today. They already said he's probably not going to practice tomorrow, but he'll probably get in something limited Friday or yep. uh, Saturday. So it's just something to keep an eye on. Um, if he can escape this weekend's game and, you know, be fine, then obviously he'll be good. He's got the bye week right after that and then we have one more quarterback on the list real quick we have Drew Brees coming back from this thumb injury they also said he's a game time decision I mean with Teddy Bridgewater playing so well it almost seems like they should probably sit in for one more week going into their bye and then come off strong against the Falcons uh what are you do you think if Brees comes back this early like the thumb injury will affect him because it does fall within like the normal time range they said of his return time yeah. but if, if Brees is you know they said he's going to be a game time decision if you're a Brees owner you know, super flex league or something. He's like your best option there. Um, are you're playing him or? Yeah, I mean, if he's on the field and playing him, I'm gonna be. His upside is higher than most people's his upside. Yeah, like I would say, like obviously, if it's like him or Rogers or him or him or Watts, something like that. Like then I'd say, all right, no, then I'd sit him. But if it's like him or Matt Moore or him or Matt Schaub or like yeah. then I'm like they're playing in, in a pretty bad Arizona defense, even with Patrick Peterson. So it's like. My suspicion is he'll he may play. I think he'll be a true game time decision. I wouldn't be surprised if Bridgewater takes the role and is back in two weeks. He yeah, comes I back mean, in two weeks and he's ready to rock. Uh, this is a little more challenging with a football than a baseball. So uh, it's the grip strength. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's very close to returning. Yeah, he's got to be. I mean, all the reports say that he's you know pretty much fifty yeah. fifty. And even if even if they already know that he's not going to play this weekend, they just keep saying that like he's obviously very very close to yeah return. yeah he'll be, he'll be that the rehab went well and like nothing went wrong he'll definitely yep. be back after the bye week um definitely. so if, if you do need help setting your lineups or anything i know on my patreon which is on patreon.com slash bdge you can get my weekly rankings for uh, each position half ppr standard ppr uh that's the only place you will be able to get those from me and then big dog country over there you could also get all the exclusive content from the fantasy doctors staying up to date on all the injuries and all the exclusive content they put out patreon.com slash the fantasy doctors um so just to support us as creators because obviously we take a lot of time to uh, make these videos for y'all and hopefully they are helpful let's move over to the wide receivers now we have a bunch of guys dealing with hamstring injuries and what else to do <laughs> adam Thielen is already ruled out for tomorrow yeah. night's game it would have been ridiculous for him to have suited up after yeah. like three days so it seems like i mean he was close to playing but it seems like he should be pretty much good to go for the following week as a Thielen owner, you're not really concerned about it. Okay, cool. So Thielen, um, obviously you're sitting him. Stefan Diggs gets a, a boost up. We got BC Johnson, yep. third wide receiver. Who's Irv probably, Smith, maybe a little bit. Yeah. They might go t- more to tight end sets. I think uh, we'll probably buy into his recency, his recent performance and say that we kind of like him. And then he, he's got a low floor, so I wouldn't really uh, go too heavy on it, but Thielen, no worries there. Will Fuller, the other story of the weekend, because he makes Kenny Stills extremely valuable. Mm-hmm. He's dealing with what seems to be a little bit more of a serious hamstring strain. Mm-hmm. They immediately said he was going to be out multiple weeks. Now, a lot of the times, these teams, like with Thielen, 
They say he's day-to-day. He could probably play next week, and that's obviously optimistic, but it still kind of tells you the seriousness of the injury, whereas Kenny still – I mean, uh, Will Fuller, they come out and say, you know, week, to week, which tells you that it's going to be a long return yeah. to the timetable. What are we looking at here? Let's just say Kenny Stills can't – or uh, Will Fuller can't stay healthy to save his life. Yep. My suspicion is he comes back in week 10, maybe week 11 if you're lucky. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they put him on IR. This is kind of that time of the season where they have limited options and they need to figure out who's going to be available in a couple of weeks and who's not. And if it's going to be more than a month, they, 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 a lot of the times they have a tendency to IR him, which would be unfortunate, but that's just the nature of it. I think this is a combo between Kenny Stills gets a big boost and Kiki Kuti gets a, a little bit of a boost. Yeah, um, I, I- I dropped Will Fuller after this injury because I'm with you. I think it's going to be on the much longer return side. I, would, I don't blame you for dropping him. Not at all. Yeah, plus like even if you had him on your roster, it's not like he was doing anything for you outside of the one game where you ended yep. up probably like – Probably sitting. sat him anyway. Yeah, you, exactly. That's that's the <laughs> shitty part about a guy like Will Fuller. And I try to stay away from those guys in season-long leagues. Yep. Uh, so Will Fuller, whatever. Vontae Adams now has missed three straight games, still dealing with the turf toe. Like you said, they play Kansas City on Sunday Night Football. So it seemed like a good spot for him to return. Now, you know, they're playing without Patrick Mahomes, so maybe not a situation where they need to push him. The, my, my feeling is that, like, it's not really about the, the Packers trying to push him back into the lineup and being like, we need you now. It's more like Devontae Adams has been pretty clear about him wanting to rest up and making sure yeah. he's 100%. So if you are an Adams owner, obviously it's bad news that he's missed this much time, but it's good news in the sense that he's taking his time and making sure that he's 100% ready to go when he does return. Now he's getting to, you know, the end of that return timetable, I guess, for the turf toe, which is pretty open-ended. Um, but at this point, I mean, uh, are, are you, like, nervous that this keeps kind of lingering on week to week, or is this pretty normal? Yeah, I mean, I got a lot of shares of Adams. He was my top wide receiver, and he just doesn't seem to be eager to get back in the field. Yeah. I mean, I know this lingers. The, the, the normal average return to play time is three weeks. He just hit that. He's yeah. past three weeks. So people thought he was going to come back in the game initially. I'd say there's a 75% chance he returns in week eight. 75, okay. Uh, uh, that's where I'm at right now. If he doesn't practice, th- I, don't, I don't see his practice report today, but Thursday or Friday, then I'm getting concerned. Yeah, but if he, you know, if he's like practicing or, or partially practicing, I think there's a chance he plays. Okay. Uh, Devontae Adams is dressed and stretching at practice. He went through stretching for the first time since suffering the turf toe. There you go. Inside with trainer Brian Engel to test some different shoes. Several vets got the day off. So he is finally back, you know, on the field doing a little bit of physical activity, which is a step in the right direction compared to like sitting on your ass and doing absolutely nothing. So there are brighter days coming for you, Devontae Adams owners. Um, We'll see what happens with this week. Keep uh, keep a close eye on it. Josh Gordon, you know, we just heard the news that he's been placed on the IR. He will uh, – I'm not even sure if he's eligible to return. Even if he is, it doesn't really matter because it will be like week 16, I believe, which is – They won't. Week. They won't bring him back probably because Harry, they only have two spots to bring back and they need to bring back Harry and they're going to probably bring back either a fullback or their, their guard, the win. With, right. with uh, I forgot what the hell it is, but he's dealing with something. So Isaiah um, right. All right. yeah, they'll they'll need him. So I mean, we're not gonna really touch on the injury here, but I will say that Nikhil Harry starts to become interesting because he could carve out a role over the second half of the season as the outside alpha. There, last guy here. I mean, we've talked about him many times. Deshaun Jackson. He is someone who changes the Eagles' offense, but he, the guy hasn't fucking practiced for literally the entire season. He's basically. I told you he he's he's just gonna this is gonna waste away. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, at this point, like if you've held on to him to this point, or should you continue to hold on to him? Or are you just like, nah, he's it's finished? I mean, at this point, you might as well hold on to him just in case yeah. he comes back. But sh- I don't feel good about it. Yeah, that's that's the same way I'm feeling about like AJ Green because it, it, this is one of those where if you ask him now and he's like, did you wish you did surgery? I promise you, he would say 100 percent yes. 100 percent yes. He probably knew that in the beginning too, but was just a little too optimistic. And now the week stubborn. That's say these guys are all stubborn. Yeah. I mean, that's what That's happens. the problem is like, you would have been back in six weeks. What's six weeks after first week? That's week seven, week eight. Where are we at? Yep. We're, yeah, that's uh, a problem. But hey, these guys live and they learn. Yep. Maybe they don't. Let's head over to the running back position, which yep. uh, we have a lot, well, not too much to talk about, but a lot of big names to talk about. Let's start with uh, Karan Johnson, obviously. Dealing with this knee injury, we didn't really know what it was. We didn't know exactly what play it happened on. Now we know he's on the IR, so the first week that he's even eligible, 
to return is week 16, which basically means he's irrelevant for your fantasy football season. Correct. Now, carry on. This is, I believe, the same knee in which Correct. he injured last season. Yep. And coming into the season, he wasn't necessarily like a huge injury concern, but he'd been banged up a lot in college. Now he missed a lot of time in his rookie year. Now he's going to miss a lot of time in his second year. Is he a guy that in, in the future, I guess, if you're like a dynasty owner or something, because he's someone I actually traded for in the offseason. I traded Miles Sanders and someone else for um, carry on Johnson at the time I felt great about it and now I kind of still do because Miles Sanders hasn't really shown us much but like going forward obviously you could drop him and redraft Ty Johnson's the guy to pick up but like this it almost seems like we're going to need to throw an injury prone label onto carry on Johnson right yeah I mean uh until he's like Leonard Fournette who can show you can show you can stay healthy do we know I mean, do we know uh I feel like I haven't seen any really clear concise information about what no, happened. so uh, here uh my battery's dying on my computer but here's the here's my thoughts Monday I said uh, we record a video at night saying I have a bad feeling he's going to go to IR I saw that I plugged it into one of my videos. I have a weird feeling that it's either a meniscus or an MCL's tear which is what he had last year, MCL tear. We know he had surgery. We don't know what he had. My suspicion is he had either or both. Their season's going to be done, so I don't know why the hell they would bring him back. We need a clarification in the off season about exactly what he's dealing with before we can get confidence in him. Um, I don't think it's anything serious, but it's obviously enough serious enough to shut him down. Yeah, and just looking looking towards the future, like I, I already know what's going to happen. Like going into drafts next year, people are going to start looking at him as like third round pick, fourth round pick. And this was something that, um, you know, Matt Patricia echoed to us in this offseason. He's like, we don't want to use him as a workhorse because we want to make sure he holds up throughout the whole season. And, you know, like credits to Matt Patricia because this is exactly what he kind of foresaw once he started using him as a workhorse and it happened. So if you think they're going to try to throw him into a workhorse role again next year, Probably not going to happen. So just try to keep that in mind, you know, as we move forward into a fantasy uh, off season and even into like dynasty leagues and whatever for next year. But definitely another uh, another big name guy who also happens to be my running back in that same dynasty league is David Johnson. He <laughs> got the start, played about one or two snaps, immediately off the field. Chase Edmonds blows up, does his thing. Now this should have been assigned to us and I, I, I take responsibility and credit or not credit, but I take uh, what's like anti-credit. You know, I, I take uh, a blame, I guess, for this as a fantasy analyst, someone who should have shared with my audience that Cliff Kingsbury came out on Friday and said, had we played a game today, David Johnson would not have played. So I don't know why we thought David Johnson would be a good play just with one extra day's rest after Friday, right? Wouldn't play yeah. Friday, gets to rest on Saturday is active on Sunday with, he's got something with the back, something with the ankle. Correct. He retweaks the ankle, I believe, is what happened in Sunday's game. But clearly, this is there's something going on behind the scenes. There's more to it, and I think we're yep. gonna we're gonna see something come out here with David Johnson. I don't. I mean, I don't know if he's gonna be placed on the IR. I've seen some things around Twitter. Maybe he's like a trade candidate. But I don't think that's really possible with the, his, the way. Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> the way his salary, yeah, you know, Twitter's always fucking aggressive, so they'll always bring out the weirdest shit on there. His salary's a little off, but they bring in Zach Zenner, they bring in Alfred Morris, so they're bringing all these veterans, they're signing them. Like, if you're a David Johnson owner, there are a lot of red flags here, right? So you, you gotta, you almost gotta sell. You have to. He was like my top trade target on on the video that I put out this morning. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know what you're gonna get from him, but you, I don't feel good about it. No. Um. Uh, my suspicion is this is a combination between his back and his ankle, and you don't know which one's bothering him more. But yeah, th this is not uh, this is not uh, it's unfortunate. Um, I think I probably got like another minute or two, and my laptop's gonna die. So my battery's toast. I need to get a new one. Okay, but, so, uh, yeah, let's run through like two or three more important players. Alvin Kamara right now still dealing with the high ankle sprain. You called it last week that they should shut him down. Not playing last week. You feel the same way this week? Yeah, but I got a bad feeling they're gonna play him. Yeah, you do? Yeah, I don't like it, but, I mean, he's got a great spot. That's the problem. Are you going to play him in your lineups if he is active on the field? Probably. Um, yeah. Probably. Yeah. I mean, you don't have anybody with his upside. Nope, you do not. Okay, uh, I'll break down the Washington backfield real quick. We have AP dealing with a high ankle sprain. Says he feels perfectly fine already, which is ridiculous. Bryce Love needs another. We'll, we'll talk about this in depth on another video. Bryce Love is dealing with another knee surgery. Yeah, he had a second one. 
Yeah, second one, Darius Guy should be returning from his injury soon. And 11, yeah. Yeah, Chris Thompson is dealing with turf toe, so like – ruled out. Yeah, so so Darius Guy somehow <laughs> might fit into this backfield. Yeah, correct. He wasn't a guy that I was going to tell you to pick up, but the fact – Not a bad idea at this point, though. Yeah, everyone else in the backfield is banged up and could be missing multiple weeks. Geis could be a guy sooner rather than later. We have uh, the Pittsburgh backfield, James Conner, coming off the bye. He was dealing with the thigh injury, but he's got the extra week to rest. They said he will be good to play. Um, he keeps getting banged up, so I'm not really sure you know, uh, the seriousness of the thigh injury, but it seems like he's going to be fine. Um, Jalen Samuels has also returned to practice, although he's a couple weeks off from probably returning. Yep. So keep an eye on Conner reports. Keep an eye on Jalen Samuels reports. Because I'm I'm good with Connor. I'm not worried about him. He's good yeah. to go on Monday. Yeah, because he's don't worry about him. It's Miami, so you you got to feel good about James Connor. Yeah. Uh, let's move over to the tight end position real quick. We have Delaney Walker. So he came into the game with an ankle injury. He left the game early with an ankle injury. He was already someone kind of getting weaned off of snaps and running less routes as the season has been going on. Joe New Smith becomes a very interesting pickup uh, as a Tennessee Titans tight end because they're going against the Bucks, who allow the second most fantasy points to the tight end position. Uh, freak athlete, if Delaney Walker's off the field. He will get the majority of the routes run. Do we know anything about Delaney Walker's ankle? Um, is this something like you know, people can like re-sprain their ankle over and over again and they keep trying to trot back out and keep getting yeah. off? He didn't practice today, so maybe it's a little more So, serious. I mean, the problem is he's older and he just doesn't heal as quickly. Yeah. They've kind of phased him out a little bit. I mean, he's still effective when he's on the field. He's just not on, been on the field. My suspicion is they shut him down this week to okay. try to get it feeling better, and then they just um, – and see how he does next week and go from there. They were really vague about his injury, and they haven't really said anything. The other guy that just popped up, I don't know if you noticed, is O.J. Howard. I saw the hamstring. I figure, yeah. I feel like at this point, I've talked to you about hamstring so much that I could basically <laughs> give the analysis to my audience. You so know? here's the question I have. Didn't they have a bye last week? The Bucks? Yeah. Yeah, they did. So how the hell does this guy have a hamstring injury? I mean, maybe working you out. You haven't heard about it until today. Well, Chris Herndon, I was just going to bring him up because he has officially – he has not actually practiced with the team. because That's he what I'm up, saying. And it's been like, what, two, three weeks since he's been there. Yeah, he pulled the hamstring. Uh, it's like the out. day before he was supposed to come back or whatever. Yeah, working out on his own. Now he finally practiced in limited fashion this week for the first time. So if Herndon's back, um, they're playing against Jacksonville. Oh, it's a great he's spot. I mean, he's yeah, got a great – matchup anymore. So are you feeling good? Like, would you start Hern? I mean, obviously it's going to be depending on who else you have, but like Herndon coming off this huge absence, coming off the hamstring, like, you know. So the, the better question is, is Herndon going to be wearing a ghost outfit? <laughs> I mean, I'm not putting him in my lineup. <laughs> um, with uh, tight end being so thin, I mean, I have much of a choice. Yeah, um, I love his upside. I just, I would probably wait a week to trust him. That would yeah. be my recommendation. If he plays, I might throw him in a DFS lineup or two. But I season long, I, I, I mean, you might not have any op- other options. That's a problem. Yeah. Okay. Um, After Jacksonville, I mean, they get Miami, New York, Washington, Oakland, Cincinnati, Miami, Baltimore. So it's like yeah, – It might be time for Oliver. Uh, Swain just went to IR. Yeah, Josh Oliver. So that may not be a bad idea. Foles will be back in a couple weeks. I can't get on board with the Jackson. Every season, every week, week to week, every Jacksonville tight end gets hype. And it's crazy. It's literally literally been like probably 45 games since a Jacksonville tight end has produced, but they get hype every single week. It's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Last guy I believe I had on my list was Jared Cook. Uh, He's dealing with an ankle injury. He missed last week, uh, but they do get a great matchup against Arizona this week. Josh Hill filled in, went three for 41 or three for 43 in a touchdown. So he's not a great start, but he is someone that you can get into. I don't, I don't have, we don't have any info on it. I would say, here's my thoughts. If he practices Friday, he's good to go. I haven't seen a practice report today. They haven't said anything about it since he, they, he didn't play. It's kind of the same thing with Delaney Walker. They're, they're, they're in a similar boat. Participate in practice today. Who didn't? Walker didn't? Jared Cook, Alvin Kamara, both did not. Drew Brees. Yeah. So Wednesday is usually a pretty common day for these guys to take off. So, Thursday is a better idea. Friday is the, the day. If they don't practice Friday, more often than not, they're not playing. Yeah, I think um, I, I think if Cook is in is on your waiver wire and he does right. end up playing, I think he's a sneaky good start because people are thinking about the beginning of the season where he started off so slow, but he had two touchdowns in two games in the last two games prior to getting hurt. Yeah, yeah, he 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 yeah. spot against Arizona. So it's like he could kind of fit in there and probably produce, you know, a three for 45 and a touchdown for you. Yeah. Somebody who's probably sitting on your, on your wire. So keep a close eye on Jared Cook. Yeah. We all I got to roll out. If uh, you have any more questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me. We'll be uh, dropping this in the morning. 
Yep. Fantasy Doctors podcast will be dropping tonight, uh, meaning Thursday night, and we'll have some updates from the Thursday uh, practice. And then um, I do an injury live stream on Sunday mornings at 1130. If anyone's interested, it's free uh, on uh, the YouTube channel for the Fantasy Doctors. All right, um, yeah, so go, go follow your mans on all the social medias. That will obviously be linked in the description. So if you want the best guys that are, you know, th- that are questionable. Yeah that are doing it. All right. That's all we got for you today. Thanks for joining us. Doc, uh, go charge that laptop so we can get back on here and talk some injuries next Sounds week. Sounds good, buddy. Take care. Peace.